Hey everyone, my name is Ben Scalman. Thank you so much for visiting my YouTube channel. A sentence came to me years ago that I wanted to share with you and to speak about in depth in this video. And this sentence, um, was it felt like a real direct download from Spirit and it ended up being the opening lines to my book of poetry, which is called Wild Empty Spaces, Poems for the Opening Heart. And the sentence is, the world will never give you what you want. The world will never give you what you want. Only an open heart can. Only an open heart can. And yet we live in a world where people really believe that the world will give them what they want. And in the West, what this has created is, is a strong orientation to materialism to accumulating and accumulating and accumulating. At last, um, at last look, when I researched this, uh, on average, uh, children in the West have around 150 toys, around 150 toys. And of course, you know, this is, this is spirituality 101. You know this, you know that in the West, we, we, we have a, a strong need to accumulate, to have more and more and more. And yeah, and that may not just be things as in like money or cars or, you know, trinkets. It can also be the need to be in a relationship with another person. I need to have another in my life. So there is underneath this a deep fear of emptiness, in my opinion. It's a deep fear of being alone, a deep fear of spaciousness. And yet, if we are to go on any rite of passage, any rite of passage, any journey of initiation into our soul, emptiness is something we have to confront. We have to embrace, you know, those 40 days and 40 nights in the desert, which are usually much longer than 40 days and 40 nights. We have to confront our aloneness to some degree if we are to connect to our oneness. What I love about the word alone is that it points to all one, alone. For us to connect to the oneness we are, in essence, we have to learn to be alone. So we have to, you know, really, uh, along this path of, of spiritual awakening, of healing, we inevitably need to confront the path of emptying of emptying. See, in the West, there's a great um, focus on filling. We call this progress. We call this success on how much I can have, how much I can communicate or accumulate, accumulate. And that's not just, again, things externally. That can be knowledge. Look at our school system. How much of the, of the uh, focus is on how much you know, how much knowledge you have. How much information can you memorize? And, you know, as compared to how much in our school system and in society as a whole is the focus on how much are you willing to sit in not knowing? How much are you willing to be like the juggler who juggles perspectives, juggles ideas, juggles um, uh, different uh, viewpoints on reality? versus clutching one. What happens to the juggler's world when he or she holds on to a ball, holds on to an idea too long? Well, his or her world crumbles, it falls down. And that's what's actually happening right now in the world. It's one way of understanding what's happening in the world is that we've been holding on to our, um, you know, our balls. <laughs> we've been holding on to our balls too long. We've been holding on to our things too long. So what are those things? Well, obviously there are material possessions. There are material possessions that we've identified with, that we've made a life around. You know, cars, homes, money, right? That we've identified with. So those are um, some of the parts that we cling to but there are also the parts that we play in life. There's the part of the baker, the lawyer, the police officer. 
These are the parts we play on the stage of this world that we identify with, that we believe ourselves to be. But as you know, or you might know, I don't know, maybe you don't know, but if you go in your healing journey far enough, and if you go along the spiritual journey far enough, you'll realize that the journey is actually about emptying who you believe yourself to be and coming into a clear, clear contact with the part of you that is not bound by this world, that is not defined by this world, that being your soul, the light of your soul. And that is who we are ultimately, and that is what we long for ultimately. The roles we play, the parts we play in this life, again, whether that's, you know, uh, architect or teacher, even mother or father, these are parts that we are playing. These are temporary roles. But to the degree that we, to the degree that we identify with our part, to the degree that we identify with our part, we identify ourselves as being apart from life. Get it? To the degree that we identify with our part or our parts, is the degree that we will likely experience our, or know ourselves or believe ourselves to be apart from the oneness, the life that we ultimately are, which is not bound or defined by this world. But again, we are taught from an early age, we are conditioned to believe we are parts. How often do parents put pressure on kids um, to be a certain someone, to go to a certain school. What are you going to be when you grow up? Right? How much knowledge do you have? What are you going to do with that knowledge? See, we are primed and conditioned to become human doings. And the thing is, you can measure doing. You can measure doing. Doing is not hard to measure. You can measure how much you lift or how many goals you score you know, in the hockey rink. You can measure how many cases you've, you've won if you're a lawyer. You can measure doing, but can you measure being? No, you cannot measure being. Okay, so we have identified though with the measurable and we are taught in school to be measured. And something I, I say regularly in my writing is that the more we push and promote those things on kids that can be measured. The more we push and promote those things that can be measured onto kids, the more kids will grow up feeling like they don't measure up. The more they will grow up feeling like they don't measure up. Why? Because ultimately we are not that which can be measured. We're not human doings. We're not parts. We are the immeasurable. We are the immeasurability, the unquantifiable nature of our soul that is not bound to this earth. We are not human doings, we are human beings. And so, for a long time now, for, for millennia, we as a species have identified with our parts, our roles, the things that we accumulate. We have um, believed ourselves to be of this world. Not everyone. Of course, there's been many awakened people. <coughs> and <coughs> a fundamental, excuse me, <laughs> a fundamental message from those awakened people was to, to be in the world, but not of the world. You know, that was one of Jesus' Jesus's course teachings, was to be in the world, but not of the world. But other teachers, such as Osho, would say the same thing. Osho, the mystical teacher from India, would talk about having a foot in both worlds. Right? But if we have two feet in this world, then we are going to get lost in the world because we are going to think we're apart. And we're not apart. We're not apart. We're more than that. In traditional uh, rites of passage in, uh, in, in, ab in indigenous culture, in, in tribal societies, when the youth are taken into the bush, when they're taken out into the wilderness for days or, or weeks, you know, in, in 
some First Nation cultures in North America, it's called uh, vision quests. But the, the kids, right around the time that they're going from children to teens, they're initiated into adulthood by a rite of passage where they have to have some um, experience of powerlessness. They have to have some, they have to touch powerlessness within them. They have to experience it. And that is often through, you know, adversity, through being deprived on, uh, at some level, whether that's of food, of water, um, of, their, of their normal comforts, while being immersed in nature day after day after day. Sometimes it is alone, sometimes it is guided by elders. Um, but the point of it ultimately is for them to have an experience of being powerless. Why? Because it's in experiencing a level of powerlessness that we can touch into our power, our true power. And you see, what's going on in the world right now is we have a whole bunch of people who do not know how to use their power. They use it to harm. They use it to hoard. They use it to um, manipulate. And that's because they've never had a true encounter with their power, the true essence. They've never had a true encounter with their, um, the immeasurable nature of who they are. And so false power takes hold. False power directs their life and influences them, makes them want to do evil things, corrupt things. So we are at a time now where we are being rendered more and more powerless, you could say. Things that we once identified with, things that we once um, believed were who we are, are slowly being taken away from us. Right? So what we have now is a crumbling, a crumbling of the world that's slowly happening. And in some parts of the world, it's accelerating quite quickly, such as in Cuba right now. And so there is a, a dismantling of the establishment, which is a, a great initiation, a global initiation into unraveling us from this world and the, wor and the roles we've identified with. It is, in a way, a very, very difficult um, initiation into powerlessness so that we can collectively come to know our true power, so that we can collectively come to know the immeasurable nature of who we are. We just can't keep going, accumulating and accumulating and accumulating while living from a false sense of self that is a part, believing itself to be apart from life. And it is hard on people. Absolutely, it is hard. There's no doubt. It is, it is not meant to be easy. No rite of passage is meant to be easy. It's not meant to be easy. But we like things to be easy. We like things to be comfortable, which is why people don't like to be single for too long, which is why they, they think, oh, well, it's been three months now. I should have another relationship. And other people are saying to them, you know, it's been three months now that you've been single. You know, you've been single for three months. Shouldn't you be dating now? See, it's, it's time to have another thing. It's, not, it's time to have another thing. We, we, we don't feel comfortable in our aloneness. We don't feel comfortable in our emptiness. And yet emptiness is the path. It's through emptying. Healing is about emptying and emptying who you are not so that you know who you are. It is emptying, emptying the chalice so that the chalice can finally be filled. We have to empty the chalice of what it's not. The dogma, the false beliefs, the programming, the trauma, it needs to be cleared so that we can open to the truth of our higher self so the higher self can come down and anchor in our physical form and express itself in our human awareness. We have to walk the path of emptiness and that's what's happening right now. You see, if we look carefully, ultimately life is designed to disappoint us. It's designed to disappoint us. You know, whether that's through sudden injury or loss of a job or loss of a relationship, you know, some form of, of health crisis, a disease, you know, Something comes along to trouble us, to trouble us. And why is that? Because it is meant to detour us 
from the illusions that we grasp onto that keep us asleep in this material identity, in this material world. It is designed, it is a blessing, it is a, it is a blessing to the soul, but it is highly uncomfortable to the human and to the ego, which wants to, to cling to things and identify with things. And so, you know, I, I, I've said uh, many times uh, before in my writing, when one of my favorite play on words that came to me in an ayahuasca ceremony is that we're being detoured away off course, off course, but suddenly, if we go far enough and if we learn our lessons, we say, of course. So we go off course, but eventually we go, of course. And that's what's happening right now in the world. It seems like we're going off course and people want to cling to normal, but what, but off course is leading us to, of course. But you see, the human mind that is identified as a part and wants to cling to parts is, is panicking. It's in the first stage of fear and grasping and just thinking, I'm going off course, I'm going off course, I'm going off course. Meanwhile, the higher self that sees the larger picture is saying, hey, of course, of course, but you just don't know this yet. You just don't know this yet. So we are in a collective, collective initiation, a collective rite of passage to awaken us to our non-material, immeasurable, unquantifiable self. You know, um, I'm currently in a pretty intense rite of passage myself right now. I, I have basically <laughs> walked away from my friends for six, seven months now. I've said, see you later. And I've been on a very intense path of aloneness. I still work with my clients. I still, still spend time with my family, who I love. But I've needed to do this. I've needed to um, experience aloneness to a whole different degree so that I can connect to my spirit. And it's been very difficult at times, but it's been very rewarding very rewarding and and um, ultimately it's been a beautiful experience as difficult as it's been and about three months ago <clears throat> three months ago I had an insight come to me and it came in the middle of the night and it was just one sentence one of the most powerful sentences I've ever heard and that is empty to such an extent that you cannot claim this to be your life anymore empty to such an extent that you cannot claim this to be your life anymore, and life can at long last claim you. Empty to such an extent that you cannot claim this to be your life anymore, and life can at long last claim you. You see, when we identify as a part, we think of my life, my life. But there is no my life, that is an illusion. There is no my life, because when you say there's my life, then you say that's th there's their life, her life, his life. And now what we're doing is we're sundering, you know, slicing life up into parts. And then we identify with those parts. And guess what happens when we identify with those parts? We must then control my life. And healing is about letting go of control. It's about letting go of control and letting go of the self that believes itself to be apart from life and thus apart. So when we do that, we return to life itself, to oneness, knowing that we are not parts, but we are life itself. And that is about, that is a journey of letting go of control and ultimately letting go of fear. The fear that says, I am separate. And so what's happening right now in the world is we are being confronted with fear because our world, our, my world, my life, the self that is, um, that believes itself is separate from life, that's, they are losing their power. They're falling apart. They're falling apart. And in the falling apart, there's space made for light to shine through. And that is your liberation, is when you fall apart, life can finally shine through those cracks. And life can take hold in your body, in your human awareness. 
But you see, we are a people that are afraid to heal. We are people who are afraid to feel. We are people who are afraid to venture outside of our comfort zone. In other words, we are people that don't like to fall apart. Because what happens when you heal? You fall apart. You get messy. You cry. You weep. You shake. You even vomit sometimes. You get messy. We don't like messiness. We like things to be all neatly together because that makes us feel like we're in control on top of things. We know where we're going. We have certainty. But if you were to, if you were to heal, if you were to go on this rite of passage, you have to be willing for things to fall apart. You must be willing to explore uncertainty. And because we're not willing to do that, it's going to happen for us. So the world is now collapsing, crumbling, falling apart because it is, it is doing it for us so that we can fall apart from the false identity and the false life that we have held to be true. And so that we can open up to the space between all those parts, the space that gives rise to all those parts, the space that we are, the immeasurable, unquantifiable self, the life we are. That is what these times are about. It is not easy. It is not easy. It is not easy. So the world will never, ever give you what you want. It won't. Only an open heart can. Thank you everyone for listening and watching. And if you enjoyed this video, uh, Please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you, and if you're interested in my book, Wild Empty Spaces, Poems for the Opening Heart, you can find it on Amazon. Blessings to you.